morning, everybody. February 27th, 2018, 622 a.m. Icarumba. We are 93 days, 17 hours, 38 minutes, and 55 seconds away from the 2018 Atlantic hurricane season. But first, we have to talk about today and the upcoming week. These are current temperatures. Look very cold again in the northeast. I just went outside. I'm back in the... Um, Northeast Pennsylvania area, 26 degrees outside. It's a little colder here. I'm up high, so it's colder. We do have a little bit of warmer temperatures, at least right now in the south. It will warm up a little bit, but we have a developing situation like we spoke about yesterday and the day before. Uh, we have a moderate to high risk of tornadoes right where I'm circling. Once again, we're talking Louisiana. We're talking the northeast of Texas. We are talking Little Rock, Memphis, that type of area right around here, going into Tennessee, Kentucky. Uh, same thing that we talked about, and I'm going to show this to you in a few different charts. Um, but first, I want to explain why this is happening. So we have Ventu Sky here. We're going to look at two different charts. I have Ventu Sky, and I have Null School, which is a wind chart of the globe pulled up for you. Now, what I want you to look at here, these are high-level shear winds, okay? This is way, 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 way up in the air. And you can see they're crossing from west to east across the U.S. They're covering a big portion. Now, I want you to focus right along that area I spoke about uh, for the tornado. So we have a west to east shear going across into the Atlantic Ocean. And then we have lower level winds that are coming up through the Gulf, pushing in that warm air. And also, it's driving that moisture that we're going to be dealing with once again, all the way up the Ohio River Valley into the northeast, and then it's going to turn into a nor'easter. Yes, we are going to have a nor'easter in the northeast. You can see it right there. Two low-pressure systems, one coming up, swinging into the coast, the other one pushing down from under cold. Uh, this will be cold air. We're going to have snow near the areas of the mid east you could say midwest more i guess to the west of the great lakes so this would be more midwest uh starting tomorrow that cold air is going to be pushing down and in while we have another low pressure system swinging out from the atlantic into the coast that creates our typical nor'easter situation a whole lot of rain coming to the northeast and then that cold air is going to bring the snow to the upper levels uh five to eight inches about mid to the upper mid lake or great lakes areas uh... that includes like uh, fargo moorhead uh... minneapolis milwaukee we have detroit michigan in there uh... the north areas of columbus ohio uh... indianapolis could be part of it and then as we get further to the coast it's going to be more rain in the northeast of pennsylvania uh... west virginia virginia areas of that nature but again I'm trying to explain the tornado situation so we have as you see if I move to the 28th and the first we have this low level wind that's coming up that's driving all this it's coming in from the Gulf and coming up through the Northeast this way and then when you look at the high level winds we have a west to east movement so if you mix those two together that's perfect scenario for tornadoes and now I'm going to show you exactly where that may happen now I want you to keep your eyes, ooh, sorry about the echo there, all right, uh, keep your eyes around the mi uh, around Arkansas, uh, North Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. You see this one area pop up here that may be potential for tornadoes, but I'm talking more into the day on March 1st. We have this strip here. As the low level begins to push from west to east, we're going to have this moisture being pulled up from the Gulf. We just talked about that with uh, Ventu Sky that wind coming in from the Gulf and then we have that heavy shear wind coming across west to east that's what's driving all this moisture right up into the east coast and then eventually those two low systems that's how you get the nor'easter one coming up and around this way the other one coming down and in this way that's what's going to cause the nor'easter and the northeast but then we have this strip here of where the tornadoes may happen again this isn't a guarantee but we're very similar to the situation we had last week where we had five people killed um, in these states right here. I'm not exactly where the deaths were. I guess that's not important. The important part is that there will be tornadoes and tornado warnings and watches going on over the next week um, while we have another snow system up in the Midwest and then a nor'eastern, the northeast, and then another system pushing in from the far west. You can see right here beginning uh, just as we get into March 1st. So Winter may not be over quite yet, but you can see the seasons beginning to mix. We're getting a lot of rain in the Ohio River Valley. 
Uh, it may be another two weeks before we see any sort of flood reduction going on uh, just because of the amount of rain that is on its way. So again, keep an eye on Arkansas, North Mississippi, North Alabama, and then into Tennessee. That's where the big risk is going to be. This could dip into Texas. So there could be northeast areas of Texas and the north areas of Louisiana that are involved in this. So the entire area that was under that watch, uh, if you remember, Arkansas was completely covered Every single county was in red for tornado warnings, and then that moved into Tennessee, Kentucky, and then the bottom parts of uh, Illinois, and Indianapolis, so on and so forth. So there you have it right there. That's what's going to be going on between now and the 1st. Uh, we're talking anywhere from 5 to 6 to 7 inches of rain to come, and then a moderate 1 to 2 inches of rain moving all the way up the East Coast until we peak with that nor'easter later on in the week. And you can see that begin to happen right here. Low level system is right where this circle is, and then the other low level system here with the snow in the Midwest, like we said, that is going to be a 5 to 8 incher, guys. We're talking uh, uh, Minneapolis, uh, Wisconsin, um, areas of that nature. Uh, we also have uh, Michigan involved in that, and northern uh, Indianapolis even is involved with this too. So it, it, there is a line that's forming here. That's why I'm having a little trouble trying to read this chart. Uh, this line keeps changing on an hourly basis, so it's very hard to tell exactly where the snow begins and the rain starts, uh, but just basically be prepared for it up in this area, northern New York. Even some areas to the east of the lakes here in, um, in northwest Pennsylvania could be at risk for snow. But the main issue here, again, is the tornadoes down in this area and then those two low-level systems, one coming up and in, the other one driving underneath it, and that's what's going to cause our nor'easter right there that's where the two low level systems are lots of rain you can see some of that snow beginning to whip down into western pennsylvania and even west virginia so again this is very hard to tell exactly where it's going to be snow and where it's going to be rain but nonetheless this is classic nor'easter situation going on and again before that you can see right here tornado systems going on and that's going to be march first so uh... everyone needs to be aware of this coming up and it's just the way things are right now. It's the changing of the seasons. Uh, we got uh, February is not very much known for tornadoes. Uh, more in March, April, May, we do get a lot of tornadoes, but in different areas. But it's just the, the setup of all these different parts of the weather. We got the west to east shear wind. And then on Ventu Sky, we have the upper winds coming from the Gulf, and that's just classic for tornado creation, and it's also the two low-level systems we were just talking about for our nor'easter. So let's check out this from a higher altitude. We're going to back out of here. You could see this beginning to form in Texas. It moves across. We're talking Little Rock, Memphis, areas like that. That's where the tornadoes are going to be. And then we begin to see the moisture being pulled in from the Gulf. Two low systems. You can see them separate right here. And then boom. These, they begin to wrap around each other. This one wants to drive underneath. This one wants to drive over. That's going to be our nor'easter. And look at the coasts here. That is no joke. Uh, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, everywhere up here at major risk for a lot of wind, a lot of rain, and very, very quickly. We talked about this the other day. This system is no joke. Uh, this could go as far as the Chesapeake Bay. So the entire northeast coast, um, I want to say inland about 50 to 80 miles, is at risk for the high winds and the very torrential downpours as this thing begins to just pull out into the ocean. And just as it leaves is going to be the worst part for the northeast. And once again, I'm traveling on Thursday, so I'm going to have to drive right in the middle of this stuff. So I'll try to get some video and updates for you guys, but there you have it. Uh, classic nor'easter going on, and then a day and a half before that, we have tornadoes going on. Uh, once again, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, and South Missouri. You will all be at risk for these tornado situations. And a little bit of a story for you. This is pretty interesting. This is in Chesapeake, Ohio. I don't know if any of you saw this, but there was a huge, massive rock slide that happened. Let's see if I can find the picture. I guess not. Huge, massive rock slide. You can see the picture right here. I'll zoom in, actually. I thought I had the picture pulled up. Uh, these rocks are massive. Uh, just look at the size of the road. Fit two cars here. These things are bigger than trucks. This whole side of the mountain came down in Chesapeake, Ohio. This is uh, between 17th Street and 6th Street bridges. Uh, this could take two weeks to clean up. 
This is what's going on with the saturation all over the Ohio River Valley. The ground is just soaked and it's letting loose. This could be a common situation in a lot of areas. Uh, more rock slides than landslides because the northeast in the area of the Ohio River Valley, uh, there's not many high peaks, so the risk of landslides is low, but there's a lot of rocks on those mountains, so they will fall. They're already beginning to clean up. I don't want to play. See, that's why I don't want to do it. Um, you can come to this video. It's at WSAZ.com. That's the news station covering this in Ohio, Chesapeake, Ohio. Again, two weeks. They have to break this rock down, truck it out, and then fix the road before they can even put traffic back on here. Not like a car accident. But uh, there you have it, guys. Don't want to keep you here too long. Tornadoes in the south. We have nor'easter beginning to form in the north, and then we have snow in the Midwest. Uh, this is just crazy. It's not ending for uh, February as we move into the last two days uh, going into March 1st. Uh, I hope everyone has a great morning. I will be back this afternoon, and we will talk more about the upcoming hurricane season and um, more updates on the weather as it forms. It's beginning to form in Texas right now. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you all very soon. Bye-bye.